This is John Stewart, Green Lantern of Sector 2814, and you are listening to Geek Talk. This is Professor Charles Xavier. There are more powerful mutants out there, but they are listening to Geek Talk. What's up, everybody? It's Brad Hawkins, Ryan Steele from VR Troopers. We are VR, and you're tuned in to Geek Talk. This is Dr. Egghead. How am I supposed to conquer the world and build the Eggman Empire if they're always listening to Geek Talk? Hedgehog! This is the Didact. Humanity's imprisonment is a kindness, but not while listening to Geek Talk. This is Ryu from Wreck-It Ralph, and you're listening to Geek Talk. Hello, Ken! This is Marek Ishtar. Let the shadow game begin. You're listening to Geek Talk. This is Juno Eclipse. I've got a bad feeling about this, but you're listening to Geek Talk. This is Commodore Don Krieg of One Piece. Don't ever defy me. Listen to Geek Talk. That is an order. This is Lionel, and you're listening to Geek Talk. Thunder, 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 thundercats. Ho! Hey, it's James Arnold Taylor, the voice of Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Master Plo Koon, and I sense the force is strong with geek talk. Master Plo, uh, do you talk geek? Koto ya, Obi-Wan, koto ya. Oh, koto ya indeed. Now if anybody else can figure out what he's talking about, let's listen to geek talk. Go on here. And I today, know. I have with me on Geek Talk, J.B. Blanc who is best known for Luigi Vampa in one of my favorite movies, The Count of Monte Cristo. How you doing today there, JB? I'm very good, thank you, Tony. Lovely to be talking to you. Yeah. What was it like to be part of The Count of Monte Cristo? It was great. Um, I, I uh, Before that, I'd only really done theatre work in England, um, and I'd been doing theatre for a very long time, and I was at the National Theatre for three and a half years. I trained as a theatre actor, as you probably know, and uh, I'd come out of three and a half years at the National Theatre, and I actually quit acting for two and a half years because I'd had a bad experience in the theatre, and I was exhausted, and I'd been doing a lot of world tours and regional theatre and stuff, and I worked for a web design company for two and a half years, <coughs> and... Um, was good at it, made good money, had a nice car, and wanted to shoot myself because it just wasn't what I was meant to do. And I was actually sitting on my couch one day having a midlife crisis, a little early, and uh, I was wondering how the hell I was going to get back into acting. And suddenly the phone rang, and it was a casting director called Priscilla John who cast Count of Monte Cristo, and she said, there's this movie, The Count of Monte Cristo, there might be some stuff in it. Do you want to meet the director? He's coming into town. And so I, uh, I said, yes, absolutely, and I got it. Uh, we shot in Ireland of Malta. Okay. Uh, Malta's a little, a little, uh, little Mediterranean island uh, off the coast of North Africa, and uh, it was a great experience. I got to, I got to meet Jim Caviezel. I got to meet Guy Pearce and James Frain and all these people that uh, I've sort of maintained friendships with over the years, and uh, and it was just, it was a really fun movie to work on because it was like a good old fashioned kind of uh, you know matinee movie. It was just good old fashioned filmmaking. Great story, fun ride, oh, yeah. um, um, but with great people involved. So, and I was really lucky. <clears throat> I was lucky that the, I mean, the parts been very good to me because I think partly because they've been in prison for fourteen years by the time I show up, and everyone goes, "Oh, oh, new character." <laughs> so, <laughs> I think I benefited from timing as much as anything else. But it was, yeah, it was a great, great fun experience. Yeah, and did you ever get to read the book when you before you ever Absolutely. got to? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, there was, I think there was a lot of criticism because people said, well, it's nothing like the book. But, of course, it's not. The book is a thousand pages long. Um, there have been <laughs> yeah. many, many adaptations over the years, and I think you have to take a little bit of license with it. Uh, but one of the best I ever saw was a miniseries that the, the French did. I think it was a five-parter with Gerard Depardieu playing uh, The Count of Monte Cristo. And it was, that was a wonderful. But they could go into much more color and much more depth. So they took certain liberties. Luigi Vampa was actually... A kind of um, he was more of a um, a kind of uh, bandit, a hill bandit. Yeah, kind of a uh, uh, disguised as a goat herd, I think, or a sheep herder. Um, but uh, we made him, we, we made him a pirate in our version. Yeah, he was kind of like a pirate, in a way. Yeah, from what I yeah. gathered. So, yeah. but yeah, I loved that movie. I've watched it many a times, and <laughs> let me I'm, just I'm tell you, good fans like you out there. Yeah, I loved that movie, and I loved how it was portrayed. I mean, 
yeah, I myself could recite your lines almost word for word on some of that. And... Apparently so. The tank you got me to read. <laughs> right. <coughs> I should call him Zantara. That's right. Sounds fearsome. I, it's, it's weird, you know. I, I've uh, <clears throat> I was shooting a show called uh, Burn Notice in Miami, and I had a day off, and I was walking down South Beach along the restaurants there, and I was just walking along, and someone shouted out, Zatara! <laughs> I turned around, and these, <laughs> these four guys were having lunch and invited me to sit down with them, and uh, and I was wearing, I was like wearing sunglasses and a baseball hat and in my shorts and T-shirt, and I, I don't know how the hell they recognized me, but uh, I've been recognized on, the, I got recognized on the ski lift in at Mammoth once. Dang. <laughs> uh, and I was in a hat and, and ski mask, and someone went, were you in the kind of Winter So it's it's been very kind to me, that movie. Yeah, so I like I say, Sounds fearsome. <laughs> <laughs> it means driftwood. <laughs> yeah, I like I said, I loved it. I can recite almost every line in that way in, in some ways. So it's like, <laughs> then well, I shall become a count. <laughs> so, yep. but you also got to do different Marvel characters from in Black Panther to yep. Marvel Avengers. Marvel's greatest superheroes, or the Amer- world's yeah. greatest superheroes. What has it been like to play different, so many different, say, villains or even superheroes? Uh, I don't often get the superheroes. I've got to say, I definitely lean more heavily in the villain area of things. I, I think that might just be. Uh, it's it, it's interesting because not a lot of them are British, but I, I do. Uh, I think people think that British actors do evil very well. Um, we seem to either be gay or evil or both in most of the roles that we portray. <laughs> um, the irony is for me on TV is that I've, I've, I think I've done one Britain in 18 years, uh, in, 18, in 18 guest stars on, on uh, American television. So, And even in voiceover, I don't get to play Brits very often. But the, the evil guys are always a bit more fun. Um, I remember that you, you, know, you can't really play evil. These are just people who's they're like toddlers. Who's, who's, they're just trying to get their needs met. Right. Uh, they don't think they're evil. They're just, they're just, you know, they see it perfectly reasonable. You know, that the, if I need to kill you, I need to kill you. Right. They're kind of <laughs> so like Sith always, lords. Yeah. They, they, uh, they, they, they always have the, the, the more fun material and the more fun lines. Um, and so I, I enjoy it tremendously. And I, I try and, you know, sometimes you sort of you want to look up the lore of the character and go and figure it out. And sometimes you just want to leave yourself alone and just respond to the lines as they come to you. Right, um, but uh, you know, like I, I played Bane in uh, Arkham Origins, and uh, it was intimidating because a lot of my heroes had played Bane before me, so I had to kind of ignore <laughs> all that and just and just kind of go with what I felt. Right. Um, yeah. So I will have to. I will ask this because I have asked it of all my interviews over the last couple months. Is favorite superhero of all time? It's got to. It's got to be the Batman. It's got to be the Batman. You're uh, a Batman. I mean, he's. Uh, he, he's. Uh, you know. I mean, is, is he a superhero? No, really. He's just a, a vigilante. But, but, uh, but I like the fact that he doesn't have those superpowers to kind of deal with. That it's. That it's. Uh, I like the darkness of it. I like the moodiness of it. I like the sort of quest for revenge and justice. Uh, aspect of it, and uh, I think he's probably the most interesting one and the most you know the most varied in portrayals. Um, right. So yeah, I'm a Batman fan. So you've heard of this new series Gotham, right? Of course. Have you watched? At one it? point, at one point, me they looked at me for uh, for 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 Alfred in that. Believe it or not. Oh, they were going to cast you as Alfred. They weren't going to cast me, but they certainly we certainly met, and we I did uh, a couple of auditions for it, and. Uh, uh, I, I would have jumped at it, but uh, they, they went with Sean Pertwee, who's a great actor. So, yeah. And have you had a chance to watch some of the episodes? I saw, I saw the first few. Yeah, yeah. I liked it. I liked it very much. I like the look and feel of it. Right. So it's actually, I actually like it. I've, I actually just watched the new episode this past Monday. So, huh? It, it's a great, great series, in my opinion. Good. Bruce Wayne isn't actually in this first, this last episode, which is kind of interesting, but they pulled it off pretty good. So, yeah. and you actually good. also got to play a little bit of anime, I believe, like the Helsing. 
and stuff. That was my yeah. That, I think that was my first server job. I was Helsing. Um, I'd uh, recently got here, and, and a friend of mine was working on the show, uh, who who happened to be the only person I knew in LA when I first got here. And uh, she said they were looking for British actors, and, and uh, so I, I kind of volunteered myself. And I think I started with the Cheddar Priest, and then they uh, they gave me Maxwell, and and then uh, we, so we did the first, first. And Maxwell wasn't very big in the first iteration of it. And then they did, I think, it was the OVA that came out next, and Helsing Ultimate following that. And uh, Maxwell, the character, was expanded greatly in the manga, and so that followed it. And um, what a fun character to play. I mean, just a drippingly evil Italian uh, <clears throat> advocate for the, for the, for the Vatican. And, uh... Yeah, so, and you... Oh, what? Which, yeah, so... But, yeah, basically you actually... I'm going to touch bases. You actually had a little bit of variation with Star Wars. You actually did, like, some additional voices... I have done, yeah, additional voices and, and some various Sith Lords and stuff. The problem is that, I, you know, you, you, once you get going in this business, you do so many things that it's hard to remember exactly what you did. So I think it's listed right. various various characters, but uh, <clears throat> and I did some more, even more recently on uh, on, the, on the Old Republic, which is the game that keeps on giving. Um, right. So yeah, yeah, I've, I've had a, a few doubles with the Star Wars world as well. Right, so, and that was actually pretty cool. Actually, have you actually been a Star Wars fan for years? Oh yeah, absolutely. I saw the first movie when I, I think I was eight years old when it came out, um, and I'd never seen anything like that on the screen in in my life. I couldn't believe that it was possible. It was such a leap on from, I guess, Star Trek, um, or Battlestar Galactica, which are those TV shows that we were sort of used to seeing space represented in and space travel and that sort of futuristic content. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, the fundament of the story is a great, it's a, just a great basic... It's like a cowboy movie. It's, it's All right. Um, and uh, it had a huge impact on me as a film. So that's uh, pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Always been a Star Wars fan. So let me pull this up. Looks like I'm having my recording software likes to be a little goofy so but yeah so we'll keep going here and you actually what's the, been the different what's been the most fun about your career oh my goodness I mean I, I think lots of things for lots of different reasons um, you know I'm, I'm very lucky I've managed to work in just about every aspect of the business I've, I've done radio TV film theater um, some of the best times I had, honestly, were when I was making no money doing English theatre on the uh, London Fringe, and I uh, I was uh, part of a theatre company that um, was a sort of physical theatre company, and that we we made our own costumes and props. We were eating rice. I had no money. Uh, I was homeless for a little bit at one stage, and um, it was a very kind of passionate and uh, invigorating time in the in the sort of uh, early nineties in uh, in London. Um, you know, on television, I think being part of Breaking Bad was the most exciting and fun job that I've done on TV. Uh, I think Monte Cristo was a highlight for me in film. Um, video games, uh, you know, I've, I've loved. I loved working on Knack, uh, which was the, um, the sort of launch title for the PS4. Um, and I've worked, you know, I've had a lot to do with the Batman franchise, uh, just generally. Um, and I was very excited about the show. I've got choppers going over my head. That's I can hear that. <laughs> yeah, I was very excited about Beware the Batman because the chance to play Alfred and to put a different bent on him, a different tone to him, was really, really exciting to me. Uh, and I had great hopes for that series. It, it became, in the end, very, very popular. It's still very popular on iTunes. It's opened in Australia to very big numbers, and unfortunately, just because I think of a sort of um, a difference of artistic and creative opinion uh, between uh, Cartoon Network and, and Warner Brothers and DC, uh, the series was was killed off, which was a real shame because we were all looking forward to, to having a lot more fun on that. It, we did a great first season; it was really fun to do. We got to work with Andrea Romano. Uh, I made friends. You know that are going to be lifelong friends on that on that project, 
and they, you know, they come and they go, but some you really, you really are fond of. And uh, Beware the Batman, I had, I had great hopes for, so I'm very sad that that ended. Right, and that's something. Have you ever been a big gamer at all? Ever played any video games I, or? I have dabbled in games. I'm, I couldn't consider myself a gamer, but I've certainly dabbled in games, and I try and research games. And now I'm voice directing games for Warner Brothers quite consistently, and so I. Uh, I'm playing Shadow of Mordor right now, which I helped direct, um, and uh, that's been that's just tremendous fun. So I, I I I do when I can. The problem is having the time, and I'm I'm yeah, I'm very lucky in that I'm extremely busy. Um, so it's finding the time to be able to play. Unfortunately, those things suck up your time quite uh, quite considerably, as I'm sure you know. Yeah, I'm a gamer, and even if you dabble in games, I still call you a gamer. Oh, you did? Yeah. Well, I'm, oh yeah, I'm, I'm honored indeed. Well, that's why I look at things. If you can play, if you play any type of games, you are a gamer to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, I mean, the amazing things about games is, is just how they've changed so considerably over the years that I've been working in them. You know, the first time I did motion capture, it took months to put those the data together to get that. You know, to get it into any kind of. Uh, visible 3D shaded form and now it happens live on a screen in front of you while you're doing the motion capture so um, things have changed exponentially in the gaming industry and, and the way that story is told the way it incorporates all aspects of story how filmic it's become how narrative has become much more strong uh, it's been a very very exciting period and uh, I think it's only going to get better right give me a second here I'm going to so what was it like to work on like shows like Burn Notice and that? Uh, it was It's great. I mean, you know, I've, I've been very lucky to work on, I think I've done 18 guest stars now in 13 years in LA. Um, I've worked on some of the some of the best shows on, on TV, uh, probably the best of which was Breaking Bad, which I was very lucky to be a part of. I uh, didn't know when I did my first episode that it was going to be such a hit, but um, when I came back to do my second episode, which was at the beginning of season five, uh, it was a very, very exciting uh, time because because Breaking, Breaking Bad had kind of exploded. Um, but I've been I've, I've been very lucky. I've worked on great shows. I, I started. I think uh, the first one I did was was NYPD Blue. I was in the last season of that. I seem to be in the last season of a lot of shows. Maybe I just closed them. <laughs> that's my, maybe that's my. I'm the kiss of death to any television show in America. Maybe you're like they're like oh he's we better quickly get him on before we just completely end this. <laughs> it would be nice if they thought like that. Yeah, that would be very nice. Um, what what I love about TV is I get to play such a wide range of parts. Uh, I, I do a lot, I've done a lot of American roles. I've done Russian roles. I've done uh, the, my last two were in, an Arab on Shameless and an Israeli on a thing called The Brink for HBO, which I did just before Christmas. Um, so I, I'm very very lucky in that I have a I get to play a wide variety of roles and on a wide variety of shows. Um, the sadness is that you don't—you never quite feel part of the team, uh, as I mentioned before, and, and uh, you kind of in and out. You do your bit and you go, but um, but uh, we're very lucky at the moment because it's a, there's a there's a big sort of renaissance in television, and uh, it's kind of the golden age of TV right now. Um, but I was lucky when you know when the movie industry started dying off a little, and, and we had a lot of runaway production, with production happening in places other than LA. Yeah. My friends are digging away. Um, uh, as that as that as that died off, I my voiceover career started exploding, and I, I got very busy in voiceover. And I think I've worked on over 150 game titles now, so um, I've been very very fortunate. Yeah, well, for your phone dinging, I'll just call that as dang Skype, dang Skype. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. It's a Skype protest. Right. So, and you actually got to do some in Digimon Fusion. Oh my God! Yes, <laughs> you're asking me to remember stuff that I can't remember now, Tony. You have to be careful. <laughs> well, I mean, I get into some of that Digimon stuff watching it, and what oh, I think it? I did, yeah, I think I did Whalemon and Volcanomon, and I did some other stuff in that as well. I think Feralmon. Oh yeah, that's right. Now it's all coming back to me. You brought back all those <laughs> terrible bad things. <laughs> well, I don't know if, how bad they would be. I no, mean, they great memories. I told you I'd bring up something that you probably haven't been asked for a while. Yeah, yeah, all the skeletons. <laughs> so, what was it like doing something like that? Well, those are those are fun. I mean, they're, they're, they're you know, it's it's uh, it's an elevated kind of form of the art. I think it's you know, you you, uh, 
you have to make some pretty bold choices and go go big or go home with those things. But they're always fun to work on. I mean, I've been working on Naruto and, and Bleach before it ended for many many years. Um, and uh, anime's always been there as a sort of the rock solid basis. It's how I got started in voiceover. It's a great way to get started in voiceover because it's ironically one of the most difficult. Uh, forms of voiceover to do because you're matching lip flap and one of the least well played, well paid um, <laughs> forms of voiceover as well. So I've always tried to keep loyal to those roots and do anime whenever I can. I I, I have time to do less of it than I used to. Right. Um, so something that like say live TV. You, I mean, you've done theater and stuff. For how long did you do theater then, or do you still do it? <laughs> Uh, well, I, I still work in theatre uh, sometimes as a, di- as a dialect coach. Uh, the problem is being able to afford to do theatre because theatre is very poorly paid. And as you grow up and get older and have responsibilities and ex-wives and children and things like that, um, you have to <laughs> you have to make sure that the income is still coming in. So right. a lot of theatre. I, I mean, I, I uh, I've always looked at theatre as, as the real treat. Well, I was very lucky to start my career in theatre. I went to the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art in London. And I did 13 years of theatre in England before I came to the US. So that was a, it was a really great, strong training basis for me and very much where my heart uh, still is. Um, I, think, uh, I think now the choice is to do the money work so that I can earn the right to be able to choose you know, other kinds of work as and when I can do them. Um, so you know, th- there's nothing like theatre. It's live. It's dangerous. It requires a specific set of skills. It's very exhausting. It's physically demanding. Um, but I tend to put the same kind of energy into into all my work. Hopefully, um, I'm very physical behind the mic when I'm working, even in voiceover. Um, so yeah, I, I, uh, I theatre is an extraordinary training, and it's a. Um, it gave me a very strong technical basis, which which stood me in good stead for for the voiceover career later on. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And you it's actually. Just fun to do. Well, yeah. I mean, I myself don't really do theater. I've actually had a little fun with doing a little bit, trying to do voices uh-huh. myself. I mean, uh-huh. like I told you, I'm a Star Wars fan. Uh-huh. I have been able to perfect the Yoda voice. Oh yes. Yeah. Well, come on then, give me some. Mmm, good food. Come, come, follow me. Very nice. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Nicely done. Yeah, I actually perfected some of my voices. I've even were. I even do a crossover between Arnold and Yoda. I am <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger. Powerful <laughs> Jedi, are you? <laughs> I do a lot of fun stuff at work with voicing, so good. It's one of those things. If you're at work, sometimes you got to do it to keep sane. <laughs> no, that's that's definitely definitely true. And you know, I, I think uh, I mean that's how I got it. I think that's how I got into doing voices in the first place was trying to stay out of trouble in school. Right. Make people make people laugh. That's how I first figured that I could that I could do it. Right, and you actually. Did you when you did Deacon Frost? Did you actually take and follow the Blade the movie type thing? I did not. I ignored it intentionally. Um, I, I wanted to approach it completely fresh uh, and trying to do try and do my own own thing. And along with the director Jamie Simone, uh, we came up with with what we did. Uh, any uh, link to fictional characters uh, is quite by accident. <laughs> Hey, that's okay. Like I say, I figured I'd ask because you never know. Yeah, Some we just people. saw him as this very, you know, he was very dark, very moody, very quiet, um, very sinister. Um, and again, you know. Such you, an you evil person. He <laughs> is, but you can't play him evil. You have to play him as a man who's trying to get his needs met. You know, if you play right. evil, he doesn't. it's not frightening. <laughs> right. So, and that's usually pretty cool that doing something like that. Yeah, those things are really fun, and they, you know, it was nice to see Marvel dipping into the anime world and doing that crossover. They, they were really fun to do. I did a few of them. I can't even remember what they were, but I, uh, I think I did Wolverine, I did Blade, and I did another one. Um, and uh, and then, Black yeah, Panther was, is it, one. You did yeah, actually. Black that was that was with a different company. That was earlier on. That was with a guy called Reggie Hudlin, who's uh, a very very well known and famous and prolific producer and writer. Um, 
And I, that, again, that was another series that we did that never really made it to light. It, I think it got released on DVD, but it was a good... It was a good... Uh, it was like a sort of stop-motion animation. Okay. Um, and uh, a funny story, I, they asked me to play an African secretary to the king. Um, I was in the booth doing... I was doing... Well, I was doing various characters. I did uh, Batroc and... Uh, and then... Um, yeah, they, so they asked me to do this. So, so I had to do this part that talked like this. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. There is a telephone call for you. Um, and uh, I was a bit worried because, you know, the producer, the, the um, I think even the engineer was black. Everyone in the room was black. And I was like, are you sure you want me to do this? With this? I, don't, I don't feel very good about doing this. And it's something that's happened to me and friends of mine uh, quite often. Yuri tells a great story about having to play some someone's someone's mother who was a black character and there were three other black actors in the room and he just wanted to die and uh, you sort of turn to the rest of the room and apologize for everything you're about to do um, I right. once had to do I had to play a, super, a Japanese superior officer to a Japanese actor and I just I just I looked at him and I said I'm really really sorry for what's about to happen <laughs> yeah I'd be like this is, uh, the, this yeah. is not going to sound good as I'm standing there going it is a motor over honor <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, uh, yeah, it's it's what we call thin ice, right? It, <laughs> but, uh, it's a do, thin I'm, line, it's, extremely. <laughs> yeah, very thin. I uh, but the same things happened to me on TV. I played about five or six Latinos on TV, um, like in Breaking Bad. I was a Mexican doctor. I even had to speak Spanish, and I don't speak Spanish, so I, I'm used to that. And I'm, <laughs> I've, I've very generous uh, Latino actor friends who say, no man, no problem, if you were the right guy for the job, you were the right guy for the job, but I always feel slightly awkward doing it. Right. It just right. it just seems to have been the, lot, the, the the hand I've been dealt. Right, and you actually had a small part in Garfield The Tale of Two Kitties. Oh, that one I'm banning from you bringing up. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can bring it up, it's fine. Yep, that was, uh, gosh. That was a long time ago as well. Yeah, I had a little hotel port apart with Breck and Meyer that was fun. Just a little <laughs> bit of fun. Really. Yeah, it, that was yeah. a good movie. I enjoyed that yeah. one. Fun, fun to do. So, and basically, you did you actually get to work with Johnny Depp in Pirates of the Caribbean? Well, funny enough, I sort of did. Um, that kind of happened by accident. I was I, I was friends with the casting director Denise Shame, and she cast me in a few things over the years. And she called me up, and they, they they first I think they wanted to do a reading of the script for for part of the third movie at World's End uh, because the reviews for the second movie had come out, and they they talked about how confusing the script was and how they wanted to get it straightened out. So they called up a bunch of actors who weren't in the cast, um, and there were there were there were good people. There was me. There was Johnny Lee Miller. There was Reggie Lee. There was there were good good actors. They assembled none of whom were in the original movie. And we did the reading to help them clear up the script for Gore Verbinski and Jerry Bruckheimer and the two writers. And then they called me again and asked me to come and help them rehearse, uh, do a camera rehearsal for the meeting of the Pirate Kings on, I think it's Skull Island. And I, I walk into the studio, uh, I, walk, I get onto the lot and I walk into the, onto the soundstage and they put me right between Jeffrey Rush on my right and Johnny Depp on my left. Dang! <laughs> and at the t yeah, I know. And, and we just started sort of talking. And um, at the time, I, I used to roll my own cigarettes back when I smoked, and uh, I used to uh, have licorice licorice papers to roll them up. And Johnny Depp smoked exactly the same thing. And so we'd go outside for a quick ciggy in between takes and and uh, on breaks and stuff. And, and I, I'm French originally, right. so uh, and Johnny lived in France. So we we got to talk and, and hung out for the whole day. Um, which was an amazing experience, and he's a fabulous guy. He's uh, very generous, very generous natured, and I, he's someone I've always admired because he didn't always do what was expected of him. He made his own choices and went his own way. Um, so I had the uh, the honor of hanging out with him for a whole day, and it was very easy. It was like talking to an old friend. The next day, I think I was back in my garden at my house in Eagle Rock when I lived over there, you know, picking up dog poop in the backyard, thinking. What the hell happened? How did that? Yesterday <laughs> I was hanging out with Johnny Depp, and today I'm cleaning up dog shit. Uh, this, <laughs> this is a very, very strange profession I'm in. Um, but I, and I, I got to meet I got to meet all, a lot of the cast there. Uh, I met Kira Knightley, and I met uh, um, uh, Jeffrey Rush, obviously. And I, they wanted me to play the Keith Richards part for the reading, um, so I went and did my best Keith Richards impression. 
Um, right. That, uh, so that, that was tremendous fun. And then uh, a few weeks later, they called me up and said, there's this tiny one-line part. Would you help us out? It's a clerk. Would you come in? We'll give you X for the day. And I said, yeah, of course, absolutely, just to have my name on that franchise. So I went and did a little one-liner there as well. So that's pretty cool. I myself feel yeah, like, fun. hey, I could use the extra cash. <laughs> well, we could always use the extra cash, absolutely. Exactly. I don't know anybody <laughs> who doesn't turn down extra cash. Right, so, absolutely. But basically, do you have anything coming up in the future that you'd like to promote? Ooh, now then. Uh, it, true to form, and you'll probably this will probably happen in every single interview you do. But uh, Well, if you the, can't talk com- about com- it... Then. <laughs> the common response is nothing I can talk about. I will say that I'm I'm uh, in 2015. I'm directing. I'm voice directing three major projects for Warner Brothers that I'm already signed up to do, um, which I'm very very excited about. Um, and uh, I'm very grateful to Warner Brothers. They they asked me to help out on Shadow of Mordor, uh, with the Lord of the Rings game. I then directed Lego Batman Three Beyond Gotham. Uh, as a, I did that as a solo project, voice directing, nice. and. Uh, and uh, I, they, they they seem to think that I don't I wasn't screwing it up, so they they keep offering me other stuff. So that's been a nice uh, direction. I directed some theatre and and some opera in the UK, and I've directed small games for other companies here. But um, being accepted into the Warner Brothers family has been uh, an absolute dream for me. And I've been working and directing with some of my favourite people in the world who are voice actors. Some of them my heroes uh, and mentors. And um, I'm very, very grateful for that. Right. So that's pretty cool. Do you ever get to, like, conventions and stuff? When I am asked, and, and it's a, I, I get a lot of uh, contact from fans saying, when, when can, how can I get you to appear at a convention? And I say, as, as, as this is the way it's done. You have to campaign to the convention. You have to ask the convention to invite me. And if you invite me, I will do everything I can to be there. Right. So... Uh, if anyone's listening and you want me at a convention, holla. Holla at the convention and they will invite me. Right. I myself ask this sometimes is, do you sign through the mail for autographs, people coming? If Yes. If people want to go on my website, they can. it's jbblanc.com. They can see my, they find my uh, voiceover agent, Arlene Thornton's address on there. And through her, I will happily sign stuff through the mail. Well, I'll probably have to look to do that. Have to All get right. you. I got. I myself am an autograph collector, and excellent. I myself, hopefully, I can find. I might have to get a get a copy of Count of Monte Cristos and send the cover to you. you. <laughs> I will happily do that, my friend. So, alrighty. Well, thanks for coming on today. Not at all. My pleasure. Thanks. It's been great talking to you. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, considering we've had the technical difficulties. <laughs> We seem so. to have come through it fairly unscathed. Alrighty. So, All right, Tony. Thank you so 